While not exactly gaming related, I know many of you will be interested to hear what the Titan V can mine. Plus, AMD's first party custom Vega is soon to be released. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Meld. For anyone curious as to how well Nvidia's first Volta card for PC can mine Ethereum and Monero, here's your chance. First up, WCCF Tech tested the Titan V with the Monero cryptocurrency, and it did pretty horribly. The Titan V, at its most optimal performance to power draw, got about 1445 hashes per second at 130 watts. Compare that to the much cheaper RX Vega 64's 1965 hashes per second at 203 watts. Basically, there's no contest when it comes to Monero. Vega 64 is the better buy hands down. When it comes to the much more popular cryptocurrency Ethereum, Hot Hardware did a recent article where they tested Titan V's hash rate. And it's actually not bad, but given the price tag, it's not great either. At stock clocks, you can see the Titan V can produce over 69 mega hashes per second, nearly double that of the Titan XP or Vega 64. He also provided overclock results, which is a little peculiar given you lose a good bit of efficiency unless we're just talking a memory overclock, but this isn't. Regardless, it reached just over 82 mega hashes per second. These are some great numbers, especially when the Titan V is able to pull it off with what's probably at least a little bit less power draw than AMD's Vega 64. Unfortunately, when we compare price to performance, it's not so good. At over four times the cost of Vega 64, you can see it loses a lot of that appeal. Some may argue that it could show use when maximizing motherboard space, but it's up to you as to whether it's worth it or not. Really, I'd just say that this is a great benchmark to give us an idea of what their upcoming gaming cards can handle at a much cheaper cost. While on the topic of gaming cards, Sapphire, one of AMD's premier board partners, has fully unveiled their custom Vega 64 and Vega 56 GPUs. They're called the Nitro Plus series, and each card offers between 12 and 14% higher base frequencies to their reference air-cooled counterpart, with what looks like the Vega 56 taking that over 12% boost and Vega 64 Nitro Plus with a 14% difference. When it comes to boost, the Nitro Plus Vega 64 gets a 4.2% boost, and Vega 56 a nice 7.1% increase over reference air-cooled boost performance. When it comes to providing power for these cards, both use three 8-pin connectors instead of the dual connectors on AMD's reference design. It also comes with a fan header for syncing fans to the GPUs. The Nitro Plus has a really cool design with RGB elements over the shroud and sapphire logo. But of course, your opinion may vary. I just think it looks pretty sweet and can work with just about any setup. The Sapphire Nitro Plus Vega 64 is set to come in at a pretty hefty $659. That's actually not bad when you compare it to the inflated cost of AMD's reference card, but not so great when matched against a 1080 for over $100 less, or a 1080 Ti that blows it away for just a bit more. Of course, what you decide to get is completely up to you. So while that does it for today's video, what do you think of Sapphire's custom Vega cards? What about Volta's probable future in mining Ethereum? Let me know down in the comments below. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.